What's up, everybody? Rob Gill, Epic Financial Strategies. And, you know, it's always important to surround yourself with folks that share not only in whatever your core values are, but also entrepreneurial, um, understand business, have success in ways that you don't. And when you begin to collaborate with folks and really start to put yourself in the pond of other thinkers that have been there, done that, you begin to learn how to incorporate that into your world. And today, I am blessed to be with my man, Kuda Biza. What's, What's up, up brother? brother? How, how are you doing? doing? Kuda is in the house. Uh, Kuda is the founder, and I'll let him tell the whole story because it's incredible of non-believables. And um, his entrepreneurial background and his um, desire to make positive change in the world and being able to feed folks is incredible. So, Kuda, let me just ask you a question, and we'll dig into this, but yep. can you tell the folks, nice and slow here, what is Nunbelievables and what is it all about? Yeah, so <clears throat> Nunbelievable, we are a mission-based cookie company, and uh, the cool thing about this is that when someone buys a pack of cookies, we donate a meal to feed someone in need. So wow. when you eat a cookie, we get to feed the hungry. Hmm. And what made you think of that? What, what was the thought behind that, the company culture? Well, to be honest, it really wasn't my idea. Yeah. Uh, I actually just got pulled into it once, you know, the idea was being uh, brewed. Uh, what happened was Tony Robbins uh, met a group of nuns that were being evicted and he wow. helped the nuns. Uh, so hence the name, Nunbelievable, and you can see uh, the nuns on our packaging. Uh, but one of the things he learned was that these nuns were... <clears throat> baking cookies and uh, using some of that proceeds to support uh, a soup kitchen because obviously in San Francisco there's a huge issue of people who are homeless and mm. hungry and the idea came like hey there are brands out there like Bomber Socks, um, Tom's Shoes, Warby Parker that have a one-for-one -one model but there hasn't really been a brand in the baked goods space that has really stepped up and said, hey, we're going to fight hunger and use our delicious product to make a difference. So that was a opportunity for Nunbelievable to come in, taking the inspiration uh, from the nuns that were doing good, wow. but also creating a delicious product to then fight hunger. Wow. So, so if I may, let me just jump in real fast. So what I just heard, and, is, mm -hmm. and I think it's incredible, um, if anybody knows or is in the Tony Robbins ecosystem, you know that one of his missions is to help feed the world and feed people in the millions and eventually in the hundreds of millions. And he's been doing that um, since, you know, he was a little kid when his stepdad um, was embarrassed because there was no food in the house for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody from the church came and fed his family, and he never forgot that. It got into his nervous system, right? Yep. So anyone that knows Tony knows that. What I think is incredible is all of a sudden he, he made a connection with a bunch of nuns. Somehow they made it to his ecosystem or to his front door, and when he heard about what they're doing and the mission they have for the world, um, he decided to back these nuns up, and then this company was created based on you know what they were doing to the world. Is yeah, so we took, we took inspiration from what the nuns were doing. Yeah. And uh, we created Nunbelievable uh, as a mission-based brand. And uh, we've been able to, you know, make a lot of impact uh, since we launched. We're less than two years old, by the way. We've donated uh, about a million meals wow. uh, to people in need. We're now in retail locations across the U.S., hundreds of retail stores across the U.S. It's incredible. We sell on our website. We also sell on Amazon. Uh, but the big piece for me is that the reason why I decided to join this is because uh, I have a personal connection with hunger. Yeah. So I was born and raised in Zimbabwe. Yep. And uh, I came to America. You, you, you like this uh, story uh, with with only forty dollars in my pocket. Wow. So this is all I had when I came to America. Forty uh, bucks. And how old were you when you came here? I was a teenager. So like I was coming. Thirteen or eighteen? No, no, no. I was coming for college, so I was okay, eighteen. Okay. Got it. So 18-year-old, $40 in my pocket. Uh, I had a scholarship to go attend school. So, um, you know. Can, can, I, can I ask you a question? Sure. When you were, sorry, when you were leaving Zimbabwe and there was other 18-year-old kids that didn't get the scholarship, mm -hmm. how did that make you feel? Blessed. Yeah. Because, you know, <clears throat> millions of children across the world, not just Zimbabwe, would love, would have loved to be in my shoes. Yeah. 
you know, getting a scholarship and getting on a plane and coming to America. So wow. um, I have a sense of gratitude for that uh, because someone read my story, believed in me, and um, decided to pay it forward. It's amazing. So for me, that's also one of the reasons why I decided to quit a very high-paying corporate job to start an Unbelievable because, like I said, growing up in Zimbabwe, I was able to experience many things, and yep. one of those things was hunger. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so when I was seven years old, we were hit by a severe drought. In fact, the New York Times actually call it you know, one of the severe droughts of Southern Africa in the 20th century. Mm. So during that time, you know, we, you know, nobody in the country knew, you know, where you're going to get food to eat. We literally as a nation survived on food relief. Did it just stop one day? All of a sudden there was a drought or was it coming? Well, I was too young to even know, but okay. the key fundamental thing is it, it didn't rain. It was a drought, right? Yeah. And then as a country that, you know, really is based on an ag agrarian economy, yeah. if there's no rain and there's no crops, yeah. you're, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to have any, any food to eat. So mm. we were stuck in that situation. And it wasn't just Zimbabwe. South Africa was in the same boat. Mozambique, Zambia, Botswana, a few Southern African countries. But anyway, um, it was at that time that I got to experience what it's like to go to bed on an empty stomach. Mm. So... You know, when the idea for Unbelievable came about, for me, it was a no-brainer, mainly because I knew firsthand what hunger can do to you. Yeah. And I was in this corporate job making really good money. So you went to college. You had good success in college. After college, you got good jobs. Yeah. You were so, able to, you, you, all the stuff that you learned, you were able to kind of excel in America in a capitalistic structure. So I went to college. When I was in college, I started a business with 150 bucks. And that business opened up doors into the corporate world because I got hired by a fairly large Fortune 500 company uh, to work uh, in their innovation department. So to literally create businesses wow. in this corporate structure. Uh, while there, I created a business called Crockpot Cuisine, which was a meal delivery business. So the Fortune 500 I was working at, Jordan Consumer Solutions, one of the brands they owned was... Crockpot. Mm. So since I was on the innovation team, our job was literally to create new new businesses. So take an idea from scratch and turn it into a profit generating business. Wow. So Crockpot Cuisine was the first business that I created. Went from zero to twenty five million in revenue in less than three years. Mm. And then I climbed the corporate ladder and I was leading an e commerce division that was generating close to a hundred million dollars in revenue. Um, this was at the time when then I got the call about an unbelievable. Can I, can I slow down though? Because I think it's incredible that um, not only you got the scholarship to come here, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you, there was a lot of people that didn't get that opportunity. But for all the folks out there that are in the corporate world, what separates someone that's in the world and climbs the ladder versus someone that's in the world and doesn't climb the ladder? Because you said you climbed the corporate ladder. What did you do different than other people? Well, I think multiple things. Uh, the first thing I'll say is that I had grace. So I always want to attribute that to grace. But I think really taking action, right? Yep. Because a lot of people could have been in my situation and not taken the that's action that they needed to take point. To, to get to where they needed to be. Yep. The first thing I did when I was 22 when I got the job is I went to my um, boss at the time, who was a VP, and I said can you invest in a coach for me? Wow. And I No one done, else says that. Yeah. I had done my research. Incredible. And, um, I had found this uh, leadership coach, and this guy only worked with CEOs at the time. And um, he, he was really surprised when he got the call from me when I was like, hey, I'm just starting my new job. I just graduated out of college. But I really know that if I want to be successful in the corporate world, I need to work with a life coach and can I work with you? And then he was like, yeah, but typically this is the clientele I work with and this is my price. Yeah. So I couldn't afford it. So the only way I could do it was present a business case to my boss to say like, hey, it's going to cost X amount, you know, X thousand a month for me to have this guy work with me one on one. But can you cover it as a business expense? And then the value you will get is in me becoming a much more better, more productive, you know, employee. And uh, we went on, you know, a couple of weeks and then he finally said yes. 
And wow. then, he, you know, they basically invested in this, um, you know, business coach to coach me one on one for a year. Yeah. And that really just took me to kind of like yeah. a whole nother level. Yeah. So all you folks out there, let me just explain something. What, what Kuda just mentioned that I think it is brilliant. I never even thought of this. But he went to his boss because he was smart enough to know at the age of 22 the importance of getting a business coach. But it's all about resources versus resourcefulness. Resources means, yeah, I don't have the money to do it. Resourcefulness means, let me go find the coach. Let me go find the price. Let me go to my boss. Let me tell my boss to pay the bill, but let me show my boss what he's going to get out of it. That's what he did. And that's an example of climbing the corporate ladder, right? That's an example of getting your foot in the door and then providing more value than anybody else in your space. And the one that provides more value than anyone else in their space is the one that wins the day. Thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. Yeah. So, so that's really the second thing I attributed to is that, you know, at, at, at my age, I then found myself doing things that a lot of people who are kind of like straight out of college weren't doing. I found myself sitting at the table, um, you know, I was at like a $15 billion company and I was in meetings with the chairman, with the wow. CEO. So it really gave me a lot of exposure at a very young age and enabled me to mature quite quickly. And I was given more responsibility. And um, that enabled the organization to trust me because I was delivering uh, results. Yep. And uh, like I said, I climbed the ladder and, and found myself running, um, you know, this e-commerce division. And um, it was a really good learning experience. And I spent over a decade um, in corporate America, which to me was, was an amazing experience because for a kid who landed in America with $40 you know, in my pocket, I could have easily gone down a different path of like, hey, I don't have anything. Look at all these kids who have resources and, and whatnot. But I made sure that in the absence or in the lack of the resources, I still found the motivation, the drive, the discipline mm. to still, you know, get to where I wanted to be. So, Kuda, let me ask you a question. Um, success leaves clues, right? Yep. And whenever I'm around people that, that really begin to thrive versus other people, it's because they have habits and rituals. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit more based on the fact that you separated yourself from other people climbing that ladder? What were some of your habits and rituals that gave you juice every day to go after your goals and objectives? Yeah, so the first habit is my morning routine. So I wake up super early, and this is a habit that was instilled in me when I was in boarding school. So when I went to boarding school, we used to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I remember the boarding master used to always tell me that whoever wins the morning wins the day. Mm. Whoever wins the morning wins the day. Go ahead. Yes. So one of the habits I implemented when I was in college was, you know, the same thing. I would wake up early, get all of the stuff I needed to do before everybody gets up. So by 8 o'clock, I'm done with all my homework. I've studied. I'm all ready. So by the time I actually get into the cafeteria for breakfast, I've already done, you know, a lot of the stuff that I need to do. Yep. And here, you know, my friends are just like really just rolling out of bed. Yep. And, you know, they don't even know what's going on. They haven't, they haven't even brushed their teeth Absolutely. and all that stuff. And you brought that into the world of the business world. Exactly. Yeah. So, so when I went into the business world, you know, I would wake up at 4 in the morning, do my workout. Wow. 5 a.m., you know, I start really kind of like planning for the day, getting all the priorities done. And I would really knock out a lot of work at home that by the time I get into the office by 9 a.m., I'm already four hours ahead of yep. everybody else. Wow. So what that enabled me to do is become very, very productive. And productivity is really the, the, the name to the game, right? If, if I can do more output in the same 24 hours that you and I get, I'm going to be ahead of you regardless whatever else you do, you know, unless if you leverage, you know, 10 other people to do your work. But if it's you having to do your own work and I have to do my own work, yep. if I'm more productive than you, there's no way you're going to catch me. Exactly. Interesting. So now... Uh, thank you for sharing that. Yep. And th those are really, really important, um, let's call it distinctions for folks out there. If you really want to accelerate, what I heard Kuda just say that by the time he got to work, he was four hours ahead of the day. Yep. So by having that time advantage, let's call it KPI measurements for time management, you were able to accelerate really fast. Yeah. And you yeah. were able to take advantage of opportunities. So let me fast forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's now... Um, August 2019, mm -hmm. and we're in Las Vegas. Yep. 
And uh, we're at a Tony Robbins Business Mastery. And there was uh, the different teams that were vying for the Business Mastery trophy. Yep. And there was one team in particular that was a heavy favorite. And it wasn't unbelievable, <laughs> right? And I won't mention it. And I was on that team, actually. Um, and they were a heavy favorite. And by the way, what they stood for came to fruition in Congress for the law that they were looking to get passed on how to be able to help uh, horses away from horse slaughter. Mm -hmm. So God bless you guys, um, Siri and Beck. Uh, with that being said, they were heavy favorites. And these were world champs in other areas of their life, by the way. So um, that's when I believe we first met. In fact, we should we, play the clip. Well, I think we met actually the day I tried the cookies at Weekend the of barn. Bliss. Yeah, in the barn. In the barn. Um, that was in May. Yep. And I didn't see you again until August. Yes. Yes. So um, I met Kuda in, in Rhinebeck, New York. Yep. Weekend of Bliss. Jonathan Cohen. Yep. Um, and it was a beautiful event with some tremendous entrepreneurs. And all of a sudden, I walked by a barn. And, you um, smelled some cookies. I smelled some cookies that were devastating. <laughs> you and Sean. And me and Sean Callagy, I, I don't know what he ate, but I know I had about 30 peanut butter cookies. <laughs> I still love the peanut butters. They're my favorite. Anyway, so three months later at Tony Robbins, great event. It, this is about uh, winning the award for the, for the four or five day program that we're at. And um, day one, day two, day three, I believe that the Unbelievables was pretty far behind. But here's what I recall. I'm going mm -hmm. to give you my perspective. And then you can tell me, you know, what happened. Yep. But keep in mind, I did interview Scott, so I want to add that into it. Okay. And there's a beautiful video, folks, of me and Kuda, Sean Callaghy, and Chris Crone during one of Tony uh, Tony's exercises. It's one of my favorite videos that was ever captured. I mean that. You should put it in so people can see I it. I will. I'll make sure Danny gets that video because that video, if we were to look back on it and then see where we are today, I would have never thought how powerful all those relationships are in our world, right? Yep. It's an incredible video. But with that being said, Nicole Maiello was in it too. With that being said, um, it's day three, day four, and I remember Tony at one point from stage said, I don't know, I'm starting to see this other team be able to get energy, <laughs> right? So why don't you take it from there? Yeah, so one one of the key things in my life is that I've always been an underdog, yep. right? So you heard my story of you know coming to the U.S., um, you know, with $40 in my pocket and, and so forth and so forth. And I like to call it the Gideon anointing. So I don't know if you know the Bible story of Gideon. Uh, they know, might not want you reinf reinforce. Yeah, so, so he went to war with a big army with only like 2,000 people, yeah. right? And he won the war. Yeah. And he was an underdog, right? So for us um, at Business Mastery, we were like that, yes, right? No we, doubt were, about we, it. Were, we were an underdog, you know, everywhere you'd look. You know, there were people wearing those uh, blue T-shirts and, you know, it, it was definitely, um, you know, something that we knew that were, were up against it. Uh, but one of the things I've learned in life is that you should always believe that miracles and the impossible can happen. Yeah, let's talk about that. It's day three, day four, and there's no convincing that you, like, how did you guys stay in it? That's a great point because everywhere you looked, there was blue shirts. Authenticity and being genuine. So. Yeah we were able to really uh, connect our messaging with people that really resonated with it. And one, one of the people who resonated with our messaging, which is, you know, ending hunger, was a guy called Scott Tennant. Mm. And, um, you know, we, we were talking and just sharing like, hey, you know, in order for us to really hit this milestone, these are some of the numbers that we need to hit. And these are the amount of people that we can feed with, with that type of uh, impact because we were... Uh, selling our cookies and for every box of cookies that were sold we would donate uh, meals to feed people in need this was during the tony event right correct yep. so we did our pre-launch campaign uh at the tony event because um we were planning on launching in october but this was in august and um, the idea was we would give out samples so people could try the cookies but then more importantly allow people to order and then, you know, money from those orders would then go to the impact and also help uh, with our launch. And then surprisingly, someone really connected with our authentic and uh, genuine positioning, Scott Tennant. And uh, he came and placed uh, a life changing order for us uh, that enabled us to then generate over one hundred thousand dollars in sales 
uh, at that event alone. And that order came in like the last minute of the last day of as they were about to announce the winner. Is that right? Correct? Before like the judges had to go take the results in to like then figure out who won. Yeah. And then he came and he was like, Kuda, I have an idea. And I was like, let's hear your idea. He's like, what if I was to do this and this and this? And I was like, are you serious? He was like, yeah. And um, I was like, if you want to do it, let's do it. And, and that uh, still wasn't guaranteeing the victory. No, it wasn't. Yeah. But at least, even if he didn't win, right? Yep. He knew he had done the right thing because, it, you know, it was settled in Absolutely, his heart yes. that I want to help people. I want to make a difference. And this is the commitment I want to do. And we actually did a cookie toast. You know, like how you, you know, you do a toast with, uh, you know, wine or a beverage. We took two cookies and did a cookie toast. Uh, I'll send you the picture so that you can share it. And um, I guess the rest after that is history. It's amazing. So, so Scott Tennant comes in, places a beautiful order. Uh, you guys happen to win. How many people were there at the event? Do you recall? Maybe two, three thousand, I think. Yep. So it was a two, three thousand raucous crowd, very energetic, very entrepreneurial. These were high speed, high level folks that deal in big business. Uh, this was not a networking group. This was people that paid at least five or ten thousand dollars to be there for those five days. So, so Scott Tennant, as a result of uh, stepping in with his heart and really being able to make a beautiful purchase, came in and being, became an investor in Unbelievables. Yes. Yes. And um, you know the company that year. This was right before COVID. So that year, the company wound up having good revenues for the year. Is that correct? Or target revenues for what you were looking for? Yeah. So this really helped with our pre-launch because obviously he did it uh, in August. We launched in October, 2019 as a soft launch. So October 2019 was really just a soft launch, doing a little bit of test online. But our real hard launch was January 2020. Wow. So, wow. you know, we launched January 2020. That's when we started, like, you know, turning the lights on on all of our different campaigns. We actually even flew out to Tony Robbins' birthday party wow. in uh, Los Angeles. And then a couple of weeks after that, COVID hit. Yes. And for us, it was kind of like, wow, like, what do we do? Do yeah. we shut the business down? Do we, like, you know, uh, you know, throttled down all of our spend, we had put together this amazing marketing plan, but now with everything in flux, we didn't really know what to do. So we actually literally flirted with the idea of, you know, shutting everything down. We wow. called all of our different partners and literally kind of like told them like, hey, we're gonna, you know, preserve cash, we're gonna stop, you know, everything that we had planned for because we're not certain what's gonna happen. But then we remembered something. And this is what Tony kind of like talks about, which is, you know, Sometimes you just kind of like have to fight through, right? Yeah. You know, you need to be prepared for the winter. Yeah. And we dug into that and we're like, you know what? No, this is an opportunity where we can really double down because if everybody is going to be pulling back on spend, guess what? It actually means now it's an opportunity for us to then just double down and we'll win. So we actually um, experienced hyper growth during that time. Amazing. Uh, because... If you think about, like, let's say paid social, right? All of the big players, airlines were not advertising because yep. people were not traveling. Hotels, they were not advertising because nobody was staying at hotels. It's an excellent point. So it opened up an opportunity where we could take up all that inventory, acquire customers uh, at a much favorable cost, and actually grow the business, which we, which is what exactly what we did. So we That's leveraged uh, and pivoted our business to a more online-focused strategy, and uh, we're able to, to, to see some, some really good growth during times when we could have just sat down and just waited for the storm to end. We actually saw it as an opportunity for us to grow. And how is it now since then? Like, what's it, what does it sound now that people are coming back? What is it like? Yeah, we were seeing a lot of momentum. Um, the good thing is we are always thinking about the business we are today and the business that we're becoming. So during COVID, the focus was online, online, online. But now as things are starting to open up, we're now going with an omni-channel approach, meaning that we've now brought in retail into Ooh. the mix. So now we're in retail locations across the country. We're selling in uh, chains like Schnucks across the Midwest, Festival Foods, hy wow. And uh, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, tests in the Southeast through, you know, retailers like Publix and, and so forth and so forth. So we're really uh, working on growing the business from an omni-channel approach. We've launched new products like the Keto line. 
before when we started we just had the artisanal cookies which were you know the big yep. decadent cookies and we have a lot of innovation in the pipeline um that we're really excited about that we're going to be launching in uh 2022 um so we're we're loving the the the, the momentum we're seeing the customer feedback we're getting is phenomenal so we love how our customers are embracing the product but more importantly the impact right who would have thought that in less than two years we would have been a brand that has uh, provided over a million meals. Mm. So, so for us, that's what really gets us excited every single growth day. Growth and contribution, growth and contribution, growth and contribution. So listen, congratulations on Unbelievable. Um, can you share with the folks what else you have going on in the world that's having an impact positively? Yeah. Including the book that you brought. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk so, about This Is My Era. So one of the things uh, that I did during COVID was that, you know, because I wasn't commuting into the office, I decided to use that time to write a book. So oh. I wrote a book called uh, The Spear Method, Five Simple Steps to Success and Fulfillment. Thank you. And what happened was I was uh, really caught in a, in, a, in a moment where I started really thinking like, hey, I, I was in corporate America, I was chasing success, but am I happy? Mm. And... This came to me um, when my sister suddenly passed away. Rest in peace. When did she pass away? I'm sorry. Uh, you know, a couple of years back in 2016. Very sorry um, to hear that. So I started really thinking, like, was she happy? Was she fulfilled? Mm. What can I do to make sure that every single day is a day that um, I'm both pursuing success and also achieving fulfillment? Mm. So I went and I interviewed a lot of people who I regarded as both successful and fulfilled. And I was able to come up with a framework that I call the spear method, um, which if you're an entrepreneur, anybody really, you can follow this uh, five step process to really enable you to achieve success and fulfillment. And what the spear method stands for S it means seek your purpose, right? You really want to know what is your life's calling? What is your why? Cause if you start there, Everything else you do will be in alignment with what you're called to do. P stands for plan. And if you find your why, but you don't come up with a plan on how you're going to achieve it, then failing to plan, you're planning to fail. Yep. But the key thing is you want to execute, which yeah. is the E, right? So every single day when you wake up, you want to be executing. And in the book, the very first um, page... Um, after like the, um, the table of contents is, do you want to read what it says? Sure. The, that code? I'd love to. Just going to put my glasses on. Yeah, you can put your eyes on. <laughs> okay, Kuda Biza. The three most important days in life are the day you're born, mm -hmm. the day you find out your why, mm -hmm. and each day you act on your why. Exactly. So execution is key. Love that. So what a lot of people do is they spend the time in, you know, researching what their purpose is and they take the time to plan, but then they don't execute. So what you want to do every single day is you're executing on your why. So that's why I say the three most important days in life are the day you're born, the day you find out why, but every single day you act on your why. And Love then that. A, it's achievement. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you put in action you're going to achieve something so what That's you right. want to do is you want to sit down and take a look did i achieve 20 percent of my goal 30 percent of, of my goal 100 percent of my goal you want to take that time to really assess and reflect because once you do that you know how much more effort you have to go for that specific milestone or if you've already hit it you then go into r which is repeat meaning that you then go back and and align yourself with your purpose you go back to the drawing board to say like, hey, I had this milestone of achieving X. Like in our case, we wanted to hit a million meals. Now we've hit a million meals. Now what? What's the plan, right? Yeah. To get to 10 million. You execute on that. And then once you achieve, you repeat and so forth and so forth. So that's what the spear method is. And um, you can grab this book for free. You can just pay for the shipping. The link, I'll give it to you and okay. you can drop T it. Tell all the folks. Yeah, you can grab the link uh, at the bottom of this podcast or you can just go to... Uh, the spear method.com uh, and you'll be able to grab a copy of the book and uh, you just cover the shipping and the book is my gift to you. Wow. Awesome. Thank so you so much. That's one of the projects that uh, I'm working on. Thank you so much. And this is awesome. And can you tell us a little bit more about 
what your world looks like for the next five years. I know that there's a beautiful baby on the way for you yeah. and Ruth. <laughs> yeah, so and in December, not knowing when this podcast is going to air, but in December, we're expecting our first son. Wow. So we're really excited about that. So um, life is going to change for us in yep. a very beautiful way. Absolutely. Uh, but we're also going to be launching uh, tremendous things under our This Is My Era brand. And one of it is an ecosystem merger with Epic so you know we have a personal development brand called this is my era we have 90 day planners and also we're going to be launching a budget planner which i brought today so this is the first batch of um the 90 day uh for the for the budget planner Beautiful. because one of the key areas in life is obviously the finance space so you want to be able to make sure that you're managing your finances and we created a tool in collaboration with Epic Financial Services strategies, strategies. There we go to to help you with you know your budget as well as getting you on track to reach your finance goals. Yeah, we have a uh, video series coming out, a do-it-yourself yep. educational course to everyone, and this is my era. Yep. And that video uh, course really breaks down the micro distinctions in general terms, though, of you know how to look at money, how to get in the right peak state when it comes to money. And then what what's important in the decision making, you know, based on what your goals and objectives are, are, what your core values are, who you are individually from an from a person on what is your investment philosophy, and then creating uh, strategies that allow you to make decisions that are based on um, logic, math, and science, not emotional timidity or not at a gut level hunch. So that's going to be part of Kudas. This is my era. And, um, you know, we're here to serve and contribute any way we can educationally. Yeah, so we're excited about uh, this product. Obviously, we've given it to some beta testers. They've loved it. So this is going to be something exciting for, for everybody in 2022. So awesome. a lot's happening with the cookies, of the book, of the planner. So I'm certainly uh, staying busy. Baby on the way. Baby on the way. Mad bills to pay. That's what Biggie Small said <laughs> back in the mid-90s. Yeah, right? so, so definitely staying busy, and uh, it keeps me out of trouble. So why are you – what is the big picture? Why are you doing all this? What is the legacy? What, so, do you want to, what do you want to leave behind? When I was going through the spear method, right? Remember, S is seek your purpose. Yep. I quickly realized that my purpose in life is to create profitable businesses mm. that make an impact, right? So you look into kind of like uh, non-believable, right? We're feeding people with this. With this is my era for every planner we sell, we have a partnership with World Vision. World Vision is one of the largest humanitarian organizations in the world. Wow. Where we donate a portion of each proceeds to World Vision uh, towards the education of uh, children in developing countries. Mm. So, again, it's in alignment with my purpose of creating profitable businesses that then make an impact in the world. So, that's, that's the big vision. So, Thank I want you. to educate millions of people i want to i want to feed millions of people i want to educate millions of people so so that is really the the big vision there wow well for, brother thank you so much i really appreciate thanks for it. having me yes and uh kuda biza um you know megapreneur um <laughs> looking to multiple multiple business owner um understanding the science of money in his personal world uh sharing education on his journey and what he sees as worked and the importance of fulfillment. Doesn't make sense to make money, not be happy and fulfilled, right? And then being able to educate folks, feed folks uh, through these other ventures is uh, the recipe for success and this is what it looks like. And this is exactly when you look behind the scenes and we, you know, let's say we watch this 10 years from now, um, I'm pretty confident that the journey that he's gonna go on and be on is gonna be one of world fulfillment, world education, and having a positive impact on the world. And I can't thank you enough for being here today. Thank you so much. And uh, if you're out there, make sure that you're a go-getter. And uh, like I said, remember, the three most important days in life is the day you're born, the day you find out why, and each day you act on your why. But more importantly, always remember that success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. That's mm. a Tony Robbins quote. So make sure that in your pursuit of success, you're also balancing that with the attainment of your own personal fulfillment. So Kudabiza, signing out. All right, Make folks. it a great day.